Good afternoon, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. I have had a quotation by Rumi on my computer for quite some time, and this morning I was looking at it, and I thought I'd share it with you because it's what led to my morning contemplative time. The quotation says, in every religion there is love, yet love has no religion. In every religion there is love, yet love has no religion. And I strongly believe this. Now we know that Rumi was quite a wise man. So in this, and not because he was a wise man, but there's truth in this, right? So we know that every religion actually talks about loving either each other in a community or the world at large or love thy neighbor. And yet so many times we don't see this practiced. And part of the reason that this quotation is on my, my computer is because I've been working with a few patients who have or clients that have certainly had some experiences with religion. So either they have converted to be part of a religion of their spouse, or their spouse has converted to be part of their religion, or there has been no converting and each spouse or partner has stayed in their own religion. And there is a sense felt about the the way that the other is looked at in a different religion. So I found that this is a similarity amongst all of the people that I'm talking with, and this is amongst various religions, that once someone is coming into, if they're converting to a religion, there's a certain level of respect for that shift. And then there's also still a little bit of looking down on of, well, they weren't born into the religion, that sort of energy which I find very interesting and not so pleasant. And I certainly feel that energy from clients that are speaking with me. So I thought I'd look at uh, contemplating on this idea and all sorts of awareness came to my mind. That made me look up the, the meaning or the definition behind religion in general. And I came across one of the definitions is a particular system of faith and worship is religion. The other definition is a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. So you know what else people will say, you know, this has become their religion. So that could be someone's profession, right? Um, it could be that, oh, you know, they think I became a naturopathic doctor. I probably saw everything through naturopathic eyes. And I can tell you that uh, a lot of people do. So I found that when I was in the profession, there was really a luxury of being part of this this connected network, which really was stemming from a very good space. When I am part of a religion, I can be very well accepted within that religion. And that's such a wonderful feeling to be part of a group that way. Same thing with naturopathic medicine. This can happen in an office or a team that's working in a particular company that everyone feels very connected. And when they look at the other company, it's not as good or it's the competition. And remember, this is what happens with religion too. The other is competition. And as soon as we start thinking this way, we're thinking better than or lesser than of another. And this would tell us or can tell us if we stop and think about the ego involvement in this, which I do not feel is very helpful. And certainly in terms of spiritual transformation, this would be an awareness that can come to mind that makes us sit and think about how we think about others. And remember this year, it's all about unity for me and my direction in helping educate you or spread some different thoughts and awarenesses. It's about unity. It's about, um, there's something called unity consciousness. And I will talk more about this in the future, but this is kind of the changing environment of our, our lives right now. So whether you're consciously aware of it or not, there is more of a desire for people to be more connected. So whether it's just personally feeling that I'd really like to connect with my friends or family more, or whether there is a global movement of I'm really concerned about someone who's, you know, halfway around the world because they're going through whether forest fires or flooding or anything, that's what they're going through and I feel for them. And we've always had a certain number of people that has done that, but there's an increasing um, tendency right now. So a raising of the global vibration, I'll say, which is more aware of this. So I came across this quotation, which I absolutely loved. This is by Buddha. And Buddha says, 
He who experiences the unity of life sees his own self in all beings and all beings in his own self. And he looks on everything with an impartial eye. So I'll read that again. He who experiences the unity of life sees his own self in all beings and all beings in his own self and looks on everything with an, with an impartial eye. And you know what this means, right? So oftentimes when we're feeling compassionate towards another person, it's because we can think, I could be in that position. Oh my goodness, what if I was in that position? And then our compassion comes out, our empathy comes out. Maybe we've been in that position and we feel even more compassionate, more empathetic. And we don't need to be in a situation of another person suffering to actually understand that this must not be easy when anyone is going through suffering. We can feel that. We can also feel that we don't really care where someone is coming from, what profession they do or what religion they are when we are in some dire need. If someone would help us in those times, we are so appreciative and grateful for those those opportunities, right? So it's those experiences of someone helped me. And this is the experience that we can give out of love too. So when we are looking at others with that compassionate eye, we can definitely see ourselves in everyone else. We're able to come from a place of wanting to give and help in a time that we can because we can see and feel what someone else is going through. So today I would love for you to sit down for five minutes and see, are you able to see the unity amongst the people amongst you in terms of, it could be your own office and it might feel really good that I feel very united with my office. How do you look at your competition? Are you able to see that they're going through something very similar to what you're going through in the times that are not so easy? Then come back to the individual level. Are you able to see that someone in your space, your environment is going through something that maybe you're not, but that you can be compassionate about because you're actually more similar than different? If you are able to feel that and notice the people around you are likely reflecting your own vibration, you will increase the love that you have for yourself and the world around you, and you will spread the same energy to the world around you. I finally finish with this quotation, which I think just kind of ties it all together. It's a quotation by Dalai Lama. And this quotation says, if you are showing love to your fellow human beings, you are showing love to your God. If you are showing love to your fellow human beings, you are showing love to your God. I hope that you are showing love to everyone around you, including your God or your religion or your purpose in life. And hopefully contributing positively to our unity consciousness. Have a great day, everyone. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Take care, everyone.